Hello, and welcome along to the stream tonight. I hope everyone is safe and well in their various lockdown isolation states. Uh, we are coping. Uh, there have been a couple of interesting periods, let's put it this way, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, starting to get into a little bit of a routine, which is good. I think that's what we all need a little bit, especially with the young ones. So, uh, hello, Maurice. Welcome to the stream. Um, so, the first thing I want to talk about, bizarrely, everyone know what one of these is? Everyone, everyone played with one of these before? So, my time off is not being wasted. I am learning how to solve one of these bad boys. Um, I have gone from not being able to do anything, literally nothing, with a Rubik's Cube to being able to solve the first two layers plus get a yellow cross on the top. So I'm quite impressed with myself, to be honest. Um, I've still got a long way to go. Ah, Martin's on the stream, look! So, Martin is uh, one of the uh, one of the other maintainers on the uh, cake team. And I've known for a long time that Martin is very well versed in solving Rubik's Cubes to the point that he's got a, an 8x8, eight eight, Martin, is that right? So you've got like 3x3, 4x4, 5x5... Uh, oh, I've just been raided by Freestyle Coder. Uh, hello, people from uh, Freestyle Coder's channel. Thank you very much. I'm just talking about... Well, I haven't really started the stream yet. I'm just talking about the fact that I'm using my uh, self-isolation uh, lockdown time to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube. And Martin, who's in the chat, uh, is, is, is... As far as I'm concerned, he's an expert in uh, solving Rubik's Cubes. So... I've got the basic kind of manipulations down to the point that I can get uh, the, the two layers sorted and I can get a little yellow cross on the top. But then I have to go back to my notes and learn. Basically, there's various different algorithms. Uh, Martin could tell you more. There's various different algorithms that you have to assign based on the current state of the blocks to then solve the, the remaining portion. Um, and I haven't learned those algorithms. The only algorithm that I have learned is for getting the the yellow edges to the right place for the second layer. Um, the other ones I haven't learned, but um, I'm getting there. And by the end of by the end of the self isolation uh, lockdown COVID nineteen pandemic, my aim is to have. Or rather, not to solve it, because I, I mean, I have solved it, but that's with following along the tutorials and all that sort of stuff. I want to be able to solve this without any outside help. So that's where, that's where I'm going to try and get to. So watch this space, right? Watch this space. Uh, hello, Kim. Sorry, I didn't see you joining in there. So, um, oh no, Martin's saying, I don't have an 8x8. Eight eight. Oh, he's saying only. So Martin has a so this is a three by three Rubik's cube. This is a simple one. Uh, Martin has a seven by seven, and I wouldn't even know where to start. I only just know where to start now with a three by three. Um, I've always fixed them by taking them apart. That's one way of doing it, Maurice. Uh, okay, Brett, what what's the matter? What, what do you need saved from from the Rubik's cube? I could put it down put it down if that helps um okay so tonight's stream is gonna be about chocolatey gooey probably the rubik's cube the, um, anyone on the stream actually know how to solve one of these apart from martin because he's a he he, he he doesn't count it's something I've, I've 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 had one of these sitting on my desk both at work for I don't know how long, but it's always just been like a paperweight. I've never actually done anything with it, um, but I'm I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Oh, I see. 
don't have the patience to learn. See, that's where I was, but now I'm I'm enthralled. I'm enthralled with it, Kim. I want I want to get to the point where I've got that last bit done. Um, because like this one, there's literally only what four or five blocks that are in the wrong place, and it's, I'm on the cusp of doing it. Um, yeah, no, Brett, I know I know what you mean in terms of boredom. Uh. So we've been doing. Oh, I don't know if you were on the stream uh, last Monday. Oh no, it wasn't on the stream. I was talking to some of the cake guys uh, on a Zoom the other day, and here in Scotland, at my school or my school at the kids' school, they've been really good with setting up a, a Google Classroom with classes and things like virtual classes and virtual activities. So in terms of keeping the kids. Uh, interested in keeping them active they've been really good actually uh, the school has been phenomenal um, so we've been able to get them into a routine by doing that through the day and my working structure changed a little bit which meant that normally I'd be working into the evening so um, it's not been good from that point of view in the sense that um, kind of getting up early finishing late but I mean it, it's working it's, it's not ideal but I've run out of house to tidy, <laughs> and and that's kind of why I, I wanted to keep doing these streams. I mean, this is my this is my time to kind of do a few things that I want to do, to uh, get a little bit of normality or keep a little bit of normality in terms of this thing. Because I was watching the news this this evening. I don't know if you've seen it, but um, the the discussions around it being locked down in one in various degrees for the next six months or so. So it's going to be. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, you're never done. You just start. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 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 going to be interesting. It's it's there's going to be trials and tribulations and pitfalls along the way. So I guess we'll just have to we'll have to wait and see how it all pans out. But no, in terms of tonight's stream, we're going to be looking at chocolate gooey. Uh, the reason that I want to look at Chocolate Gooey is for a couple of reasons. Um, if you've been following along at the various release notes and things or the re releases that have gone out, we literally just shipped a new version of Chocolate Gooey, which is 0.17.0. Uh, and it's been, it was, prior to this, it was something like two years, over two years to... Uh, release 0170 uh there's various reasons for that i'm not going to go into it but there's various reasons uh that there was a delay in it coming out um but the feedback so far has been good uh there's been a few comments on the likes of discuss and uh other places saying that the improvements are good and they work which is always pleasant um the downloads oh, you see it's creeping up so that's in the last three four days uh almost ten thousand downloads i mean it's people are using it so it's good um so there's a couple of reasons that i want to fix it well not fix it there's a couple of things I, I still want to add to it uh the the main one or one of the main things i want to check because i think i think um i might have forgotten something in the release <clears throat> sorry um something caught in the back of my throat there uh, i i yeah i think i forgot something so i want to check that as the first protocol so one of the things that we added was the ability to enable to, to basically configure chocolate gooey from the command line so we've now got this chocolate gooey cli thing that um, allows you to switch on and off the features, and it allows you to it allows you to configure the configuration values. So there's only one, uh, the outdated package duration in minutes. It's a configuration value you can set to a number, and then there's features that you can toggle on and off. And what we added, uh, so I added it, and then Manfred fixed it because it's a little bit broken. Uh, is the ability to pass them as package parameters during the initial install of Chocolate GUI. And I think that I then added a feature that didn't go into package parameters. So this is the thing that I was wanting to confirm. So there was a show console output, 
the default to tile, default to tile, use delayed search, exclude installed packages, show aggregate source, show additional package information. See, we don't have that one. Allow non-admin access to settings. Use keep. So there's there's quite a few. There's there's three, four. Dang it. There's four features that were added to the main uh, application that weren't added as package parameters to help with the installation. So we need to get those added. Uh, there's the other exciting new feature, and I say exciting because it's it, it it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Uh, Jan Punker76 has been working on a dark mode for Chocolatey GUI, which I just think looks amazing. Uh, so he's been working in, in tandem to this. He's been working on a new release of Ma Apps. Uh, so Ma Apps are the WPF framework that we utilize within Chocolate GUI, and Jan is the main maintainer of that. So he's been working on a new release of uh, Ma Apps, which makes theming that much easier. So I know he's been working on this, so I'm excited to get this pulled in at some point. And that was kind of what triggered my thought about not having all the features available as package parameters because I was like, oh, that'll be a new feature when we add it. I'll need to remember to add as a package parameter. And then I realized that I hadn't done these ones here. So I need to look at that. And then this was the other one that triggered the same sort of thought process is because there's been a new PR added in, which I'm hoping to look at and review tonight to add another new feature, which is to allow preventing of the preloading of the initial source. So when you navigate to a source, uh, this person doesn't want it to load that initial set of packages. The thought process being that, uh, maybe we'll just open it up. If we go up here and we look at Chocolatey GUI, then this loading. So this, not so much on the local source because I mean it's it's quite quick on getting the local source. But if I toggle to this one, then depending on your network connection, depending on your computer, there is going to be a delay in populating this list. Now, if the only reason that you're coming to this list is to go in and search for something, then being made to pay that ta that tax of the loading of this screen just to have to come up here and search for. Uh, VLC as an example then they don't want that they want to be able to just click on the source and type the, into the search box straight away so to me that sort of makes sense um, so I've got, I personally have no objections to getting that added in so I want to take a look at this PR to see if it um, to see if it works and then get that merged then if we can so there's that I would like to look at there is the other thing and so vlc nightly builds what what do i miss there what do i miss Paris? oh is that one that's one of yours isn't it there's a vlc nightly is that one of yours is that what you're telling me i think it is uh search in there was it your name that was on it it is uh i don't see your name there if i double click on it do i get to see you I see my fingers aren't there either. Ah, that's a bug. That's a known bug. That's a bug in chocolatey, if I remember correctly. Those maintainers aren't showing because of a bug in chocolatey, I think. Fairly sure. Yeah, fairly sure. Um, the other one is, I want to start to get some feedback on this. So I, those folks who are familiar with Chocolate GUI, I'd like some feedback on. So right now, you can right click on install. Oh no, I yeah, I know, I I I am taking your word for it. I know it's your package. Um, right now, I can install VLC nightly on this machine, and I can do that by right clicking and on install. However, I might want to pass in. <laughs> I might want to pass in some package parameters or I might want to pass in some installer arguments. 
or I might want to pass in some other argument to that installation that I want to do. So my initial thought is that <laughs> my initial thought is that we would have another menu option in here that is install advanced and that install advanced would allow a pop-up of a modal that accepts in the initial version it would probably just be a just a text box and you could put in any additional arguments that you wanted to pass along to that uh, installation command now we could make it a little bit smarter in the sense that we could make that modal have all the available options kind of like a text box for package parameters a text box for installation arguments so it would just be the the actual argument value that you are passing in rather than having to know the uh, initial start of the line uh, so that would be one example so i wasn't thinking specifically for the version because there's another scope of work that would be to kind of right click and probably on the details so in the details have like a drop down list here and have that drop down list allow you to select which package version you wanted to install now enabling the modal for passing in arguments would allow you to specify the version number but it's not the primary use case the primary use case would be uh, package parameters or installation arguments or cache timeouts or some other argument that you wanted to pass in to uh, chocolate QE. so those are the kind of things that i'm thinking about and i want to try and tackle some of those uh, so the first one is i need to get a, an issue created for or yeah absolutely so you you could pass in the x86 argument yeah no, absolutely so those are the kind of things so basically anything that is listed here under usage commands install so where are we at Let's see an action why can't i see it um no exit codes options so just so anything any one of these but in a future version it may well be the case that for each of these available options we would uh, add a checkbox for fail and standard error add a checkbox for use system powershell add a power add a checkbox for and then add a text box for the proxy and allowing you to type in the value so rather than you having to type in dash dash proxy equals the value you would just put the value in and then it would put proxy on the start of it the command for you that kind of things uh marco i want chocolate uh i want chocolate too i mean it is one of my I, I can't get enough chocolate i'll be honest um i love chocolate but that's not why i work for a company called chocolatey that's just a happy coincidence a coin a coin key link uh so anyway so that's where we're going so i'm going to write up an issue for uh adding the uh additional package parameters to the install script I am going to review that PR for the for the thingy mob. Oh, for the additional feature, and then <laughs> so if we're going to go down that route, I am also a contributor to Chef, and I've started playing with Test Kitchen, which is actually just known as Kitchen. So I now I'm the chef of the chocolate cake in the kitchen i don't know why i veer towards food related open source projects i i, I don't know why i do it but i do <laughs> so um i need to stop because there's only so many puns that you can do with food related <laughs> open source stuff i do i do i do um but hey ho 
you just need to add see i've actually never used salt i haven't oh can, can i can i tell people about your news maurice i think i think we should tell people about your news it should be i'm gonna wait for a yes on this one in case he doesn't want people to know yet it's on it's on twitter so it's not too bad so um I had to Google Choco Cake Bakery. <laughs> so for anyone that doesn't know, Bakery is the a name of a sub project within the cake project that Martin is the lead maintainer on. So yeah, when you search for if you're troubleshooting issues with cake, the build system, it's it's not easy to uh filter through all of the <laughs> the images of cake and the the recipes and all that sort of stuff uh but anyway getting back to maurice's news maurice has been uh selected uh, i'm going to try and get this right i'm going to look over here he is now he's been selected for the veeam vanguard program now my understanding of that is that it is the uh, equivalent of the, the kind of the microsoft mvp program so it's a uh highlighting uh people in the veeam community who go above and beyond do a bunch of stuff and they get recognition for that and maurice i'm happy to say has been uh, awarded that uh award uh he has been doing a lot of work in creating uh chocolate packages for the installation of the veeam uh, products uh that was picked up by let me get his name right uh, michael cade uh who is one of the uh developers of veeam or i'm not sure what his role within the the organization structure is but uh he saw what maurice was doing with the veeam packages and uh he i think i'm right in saying he nominated maurice for this award and uh, maurice has been awarded it so uh i uh, i said congratulations on twitter earlier but yes absolutely again uh, Maurice, congratulations on that award and obviously thanks for creating the chocolate packages for veeam on the community repository so uh yeah it's a uh, all-round happy times happy times right anyway i wanted that while i remembered so let's create this issue so i'm going to ensure that all features config can be set via package parameters i'm going to say in the 0 0.17.0 release um, really i just got an email that i wasn't necessarily expecting is that a new one or was that just an oh that was just an old one. that's okay uh in the 0 0.17 release of chocolate gooey we added the ability to build it to set configure chocolate gooey features via package via package parameters these are documented i can't type tonight documented in the new spec however there are some features missing that need to get added in now which ones did we say was missing we said that basically the last four wasn't it two three four it was whoa it's not necessarily what i wanted so it was one two three four let's grab that and paste it in and we will shorten this down so it's just got the names in it take this out oh i should mention as well um brett if you're still around I'm going to try and go to the post office tomorrow. So parcels should be going out tomorrow, assuming that the post office isn't 
on lockdown as well. So I have seven parcels sitting waiting to get sent out. So they will be on their way at some point. Uh, he did. Michael Cade is a senior global technologist. There we go. That's his role in Veeam. And thank you. Uh, hey, Arthur. Uh, welcome to the stream. Good to have you along. And uh, also, if this, and by this, I mean this one. If this... If this gets merged in, then we will have to a package parameter for this as well. Submit, I guess I'll take this. This is going to, is it a bug? Is it an improvement? Mm, I'm going to put it as an improvement just now. I don't know. Technically, it's a, it's a maybe a bug because they weren't included when they should have been. Yeah, it's a bug. I'm going to say it's a bug. Okay. I'm going to say it's a bug. Okay, so that's that one. So I wanted to take a look at this one. So, and oh, I should point out as well, since Maurice hasn't com mentioned it yet, I have rebuilt my VM, so I shouldn't get any timeouts today. I went to try to assign a license key to this VM, but it's not working. So I spoke to Stefan Scherer, and because he thinks that because this is using the evaluation ISO, it's not possible to add a, a license key to it. So my thought process of having the, this Vagrant image, just spinning it up and then adding the license key into it doesn't seem like it's gonna work. So if someone out there knows how I can add what is a valid license key onto this box, I'm all ears. Uh, but when I tried it earlier, it doesn't work. So that's not something I initially want to do on stream. So if anyone's got an idea, we can take it off stream. But Brett seems to be confirming that that's not going to work, which is a shame. So, because basically what happens is I, I, I don't keep an eye on that number and it falls out. And then during streams, my machine reboots within an hour which is kind of annoying but I would need to rebuild the base so I need to rerun Packer to regenerate the base image using a valid license key to then be able to spin it up and then run it which there's a few steps in there I need to go through uh, thank you again for creating the oh yes I should mention that too that was on my list to mention so Let's bring this up. So I can't remember when we did this, Maurice, but I was talking to Maurice on Slack the other day and he was looking to create release notes and be able to use uh, Git version and Git release manager on uh, a project that he's been working on, which is related to the whole Veeam Vanguard thing. Um, so the suggestion that I made on stream last week, I think, was to use if you're so it's a it's not your standard repository in the sense that it's it's well, let's have a look at it. Um there there's no build to it. It's it's I mean it's not a compile code sort of repository. So it doesn't have kind of a it didn't already have some sort of build automation tool in play. So my suggestion was that if he was going to do that, go down that route, use something like Saki on invoke build because uh, there's PowerShell in the repository. But what you, what you end up doing was to make use of GitHub Actions. So is there a link to the is there a link to the project from this one, Maurice? Um, 
so this is a blog post that talks you through exactly how to set it all up. Um, oh, there's a GitHub repo link here at the bottom. Yeah. So in here, no, that's not the action. So that's not that's to the other one. So let's let's grab this, copy, uh, paste this. There we go. Right. So in here, rather than add some sort of build automation tool in the mix, what Maurice ended up using is GitHub Actions. So GitHub Actions is a reasonably small footprint uh, CI platform that's kind of baked in to uh, GitHub directly. So the way that it works is you create this uh, workflow file in the git .github workflows folder. And in here, it's in YAML. Um, and here you declare the different steps of the build that you want to perform. So in Maurice's case, he wanted to exercise uh, git version and git release manager. So git version is used to assert the version number of the repository based on the history of the repository. And then using that version number, pass that information to git release manager to then allow the creation of release notes and closing of milestones and all that sort of stuff. So in quite quick order, Maurice was able to create those different steps. So here's one for closing the the milestone here is publishing with git release manager so there's a there's a create there's a publish and a close within git release manager uh there's an action which installs git release manager git release manager is shipped as a .NET global tool so it can run on uh, any of the kind of base images that uh, github action supports uh then on top of that he uses git version so in, again git version ships as a .NET global tool you can then run that which is this what this action is doing and then by using the information from the step so steps.git version which is referring to this guy up here using the outputs from that step you can then use them in the subsequent step so it's a really good way of kind of joining the dots um so yeah i i, I said join the dots and then i read what um uh, Marisa type there so yeah it's literally joining the dots of what uh arthur 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 has done a sh literal shit ton is what i would say up in the up in up in this neck of the woods arthur has done a shit ton of work in terms of making git version and git release manager accessible via github actions and also on azure devops so really this is just stitching together the execution of those two tools combined for what Maurice is trying to achieve um and the 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 other thing that Maurice did that I thought was really quite clever, and I'm I'm not sure if I told you this, Maurice, but it was very quite it was really quite clever. Um Git release manager wants to know who the owner of the repository is and who the repository what the name of so the owner and the repository. In the case of this one, it is uh M Kevinar and then Veen Boxstarter. So typically I would have those as environment variables, maybe, because, well, how else would you get to it? Maurice found this thing that can split. So there's this GitHub action where all it does is splits a string based on a, a separator that you define. So there is an environment variable that is called GitHub repository. So what Maurice found was that it contained Maurice slash Veeam box starter. So Git Release Manager needs those two things broken apart. So basically he uses this tool, GitHub Action, to take the input, which is mkevinar slash starter, split it based on the separator, and then, so this is id repo. So if we scroll down, we'll see that it's steps, repo, outputs, and then the first one, which is the owner, and the second one, which is the repository name. It's really quite clever. It's really quite clever. Uh, and uh, the the link that Mauricio has put into the chat room is what I'm just referring to there. So I thought that was a little bit of an ingenuity there. But what it did highlight is that perhaps uh, Git Release Manager should maybe just accept mkevinar slash starter and have it do the work. But that's for a different that's for a different day. Um, so yeah, going back through the chat room, uh, Brett's saying the same thing that he's potentially not being able to remember remembers not being able to bring an evaluation copy of windows up to an official one which is um which is annoying but uh adil's in the chat room hello adil good to see you how are things in fair canadian idea uh brett miller saying github actions 
uh, heart GitHub Actions, what I use, for what I have used of it thus far. Uh, oh, it's wet, is it? That's not good. And then can't wait for the marketplace to pivot to mature a bit. I think I think you're right. Um, from a purely selfish point of view, um, let's walk up to github.com. I can never remember how to spell his name, so I'm going to go the other way to find it. So if I up here and I look for the cake action, so Enrico Cam Cam Campidoglio. I don't know how to say his name. Enrico something, right? Uh, long time uh, user of Cake, does a bunch of talks on it and workshops on Cake and how to use it. He created a GitHub action for Cake. So what this allows us to do, and we actually use this on the Cake repository. Uh, so in the same way that we want to run the same Cake build on various different CI platforms, Enrico created a GitHub action to invoke and run Cake. So we we have a GitHub workflow to run Cake with Cake. So in here, we make use of uh, Enrico's GitHub action. So again, so rather than putting all of the knowledge of every single step into that YAML file, and then have to repeat that on Team City or whatever, all of our knowledge is in the Cake script, and then we just have a GitHub action that invokes the Cake uh, script as part of our build. So, Cam, Edo. <laughs> I just don't know. I just don't know how to say it. En Enrico Campidoglio. Campidog. Campido I don't. I don't know. It's Enrico. He's a really nice guy. Um, he does a bunch of talks on. He's a. He is the. He's one of my go-to people for anything Git related. He is a, a literally a Git expert. Um. He's, yeah, very good at what he does. So anyway, uh, there is a GitHub Actions for Kick. Um, so yeah, like you say, the marketplace is evolving uh, for those. <laughs> I've got not. Good one. So this was the other thing. I was getting slagged off for my pronunciation of this word the other day as well. Uh, that's exactly what I meant. So this is the name of, I maybe shouldn't show you everyone in the world this, but there's a local school in my area called uh, this one, and it's called Octorellan. And I was getting laughed at because of the way that I pronounce Octorellan. But uh, it's Martin, he's still he's still in the chat room. He was slagging me off for it. Um, it's it's just, it, it's, it's uh, and this is the other one that came up as a result of that conversation. Um, this is a local village reasonably near to where I am and I don't know how everyone in the chat room would pronounce this but this is pronounced Giri um, and people think it's funny but it's uh, you pronounce that Giri so I, 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 it's come up in conversation a few times so I thought I'd show it, share it here anyway we're, 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 we're chasing rabbits again or squirrels down rabbit holes so I'm going to try and get back to what I was working on, which was this pull request. I'm going to look at this pull request and I'm going to, we're hopefully going to get pulled in. So this is, um, how will we do this? Let's just pull the, the, let's just pull it. So we're going to do get fetch upstream pull, what's the number of it? Uh, 740, 740 head into PR740. Okay, let's do that. Git switch. I remembered, I remembered. Watch me go. Oh, it doesn't do it, still doesn't do autocomplete. That's still annoying. Uh, okay, so get EX. Try. <laughs> I'm not even, that's not safe for work. I'm not even going to attempt that, Maurice. That's just ridiculous. You need to buy a vowel. There's no, there's too many consonants in there. Yeah, I'm not even going to attempt it. But it is nice to see other languages on stream. But yeah, I wouldn't even know where to start. Uh, Martin, 
on the chat room as well. He's shown me some Finnish words that just defy explanation. There's just they take like four or five different words, mash them all together, and they make up another word. It's no. <laughs> It's Martin Smith. How else do you pronounce it? Martin Smith. Um, anyone who doesn't know Martin's last name, um, then let's just bring it up. Um, hold on, sixty-five. See Martin Smith. Right. Moving on. Uh, right. We're looking at this PR. So let's get Visual Studio open. Why is it not? I pinned Visual Studio to my taskbar earlier. <laughs> uh, I thought I did. I'm going to pin this to the taskbar so that it's there. And let's have a look at this PR. See what we get to. Okay, so the files that were changed. Here's the actual English Wikipedia for it. Oh no, I don't not believe you, Maurice. Um I'm just the way that I or me as an English speaking person, primary language being English, some of these words would come out in a rude way. Um, so I'm not even going to try it <laughs> or or maybe that's a rude way, but there would be, there would be connotations that go along with those words, uh, that, yeah, I'm just not even going to say on stream. <laughs> anyway, uh, where were we? We were looking at the remote source view model. So down in here in my view models might be in windows view models more source view model <laughs> see that's the place in Wales isn't it I, I recognize that place that that's Wales it's not the longest isn't it Welsh train station, that's the one. Aye, that's the one. I've seen, this is what I've seen. <laughs> yes. See, that's that's the kind of thing that's just, no. Why would you? Why would you? Uh, I've seen things light up here that are going to annoy me. I'll have to fix these later, maybe. But for now... What this person has added in is on line 242 or 224. Did that do that one? There we go. So he's added in the prevent preload feature, which will prevent it from loading. So if we were to take this with a spin, because whales indeed are Welsh cousins. I think it was made by a cat that walked in the cave. I think you're absolutely right, Maurice. There is a video somewhere of someone being interviewed at that train station and they pronounce it. And yeah, it's it's funny to listen to. Um, oh, hold on. I'll need to run this as administrator before I can do this. So if we do this, properties, advanced, as administrator. There we go. Let's do that again. Okay. And open up Chocolate GUI. And we'll quarter two. We're doing okay. Okay. So if we run this. What we should have is a new feature added into the 
settings page of Chocolatey Gooey. And I'm going to say that it's disabled by default because we wouldn't want to change this functionality. So let's just take it for a spin and see where we get to. So that's the mad. Let me come back to that answer and then I'll maybe I'll maybe finish what I was going to say. So if we scroll down, I wonder why it's put it in there. Why is it put it in that that one? Oh, where did the I'm saying he? Where did they add it? Sorry. They added it in between. Okay, so that explains it. So it's based on order. Um, so if we go back to this and we say, so at the minute we go back to here and we click on this, then it's still loading the page. So if we, it's there, right? But if we go to that feature and we say, put that on, then it's going to be hard to show until we close it down again. So we'll close it down. I'm hoping that that will keep, it should keep it around. Let's have a look. So that one, let's just check to see if the setting is still on. It is still on, okay, cool. So that one remained the same, but this one, if I click on this one, then it hasn't loaded the page. So now, if I come in here, now I search for something, that's obviously not going to find VLC, because I typed VLF, VLV, but if we search for VLC, thank you, uh, then they'll come up. So functionality works. Um, what I might say, though, is we might want to show some sort of message to say why it hasn't shown something. So we might want to add in some sort of UI element that kind of just kind of appears here that says uh, the prevent, I even forgot what, what was the thing called? Prevent preload. We could say the prevent preload feature is enabled, so it hasn't shown anything here. That's very good. Those are the words that I was looking for, Maurice. So I think we want to add that in. Um, so with that in mind, I think I will do what I was going to talk about, which was if we drill down into the source folder, bin folder, oh no, source, chocolate GUI, bin, debug, Let's see what we've got in here. Looks like the right place. So if we run the chocolate gooey CLI exe, which is not that one. Oh, it's in. It wouldn't be in there, would it? Uh, we would need to go up a level. We would need to go in here and cd in the chocolate gooey CLI, which is this guy. Go into its bin folder, cd bin debug. And then in here, we should have a... Why is there nothing in there? That's interesting. Um, it should have been built by virtue of the fact that the solution was built. Yeah, no, it should have been built. It should have. Oops. Try that again. No. It should have been there, but let's. Don't think I've overridden the output folder. Weird. Very strange. So if we go up here, and right, so it's there now. If we run this guy. Oh, 
point. Okay. And then do feature list. Then it's there. So the way that I constructed the feature functionality is by adding a property into this class, then it does reflection, or more specifically, by adding this attribute onto a property in this class, it'll automatically get pulled into the CLI. So there's very little work to do to add feature toggling into the CLI or actually the UI as well. It's all because you'll see that he hasn't added, I'm still saying he, they, they didn't have to add any UI elements to the, uh, to the WPF YAML pages to add that UI into the settings box. So basically the presence of that, this property here results in those things flowing through. And this attribute here, which is one that we created specifically for Chocolate GUI as well, was what brings in the localization of the uh, attributes as well. So when we do, when we click on play again here, indeed, uh, it's all about the automation. He did, or they did add in the entry into the resources file. So when we commit this and we send that up to TransFX, which is our localization service, then this English text, the default English text will be there ready for localization into uh, to Dutch, into uh, Norwegian, into Canadian, if we really need it. I'm just trying to think who's on the fin fin Finnish. I'm just trying to think who's on the chat room. Um, so all of these things could be uh, localized with the presence of that into the ResX file. Now, Kim's just added a issue on the Git release manager, and I'm wondering whether it's what we were speaking about earlier, because if it is, that's great, because it saves me having to remember to do it. Two issues, oh, I only saw one flow through. Let's see what they were. Implement ability to automatically the set repository owner from, ooh, like it. Allow users to pass in the repository URL, like it. Implement ability to automatically set repository from the git config file. I like it. Yeah, no, I like it. Uh, this could be implemented in the GitHub Actions as well. If that's the one that I'm looking at, which is this one. Yes, so that one could be Maurice, but if we were to do this one, then you wouldn't need to do anything because Git Release Manager would just pick it up. It can be used for... Yes, absolutely. So it's not tied... It wouldn't need to be tied directly to a GitHub action. It could. It would literally just be magic happens. Now the only reason that you wouldn't then need to use, you would still need the owner and repository uh, properties. So if you are running uh, Git Release Manager from a global place and not setting the working directory, you could pass in that information still. Okay. So I like what's been done here. I think we need to make one change. So to facilitate that, I am going to copy this and I'm going to go into here and I'm going to go get switch to my develop branch. Let's just check and we have, so get switch to that. Uh, get branch minus D, the PR branch that we're on. Let's CD back up to where we were which was too far, chocolate gooey, uh, git remote add, what's the guy's name? I am, I don't, I am male, don't know. Uh, git remote add, really? I thought we were gonna get rid of that. Obviously not. Let's go here, let's go here, let's go here. Let's 
uh, to that. And then we're going to fetch from I am mail. Uh, then we can do a good checkout of. Oh, now I've lost what I did have on my clipboard. Let's try that again. This is not going well. Get check out this guy from here. So the reason I've done all of that work adding the new remote is because I want to be able to add a commit into here and then push that to his branch, which is what I was checking earlier. So we, we he's enabled the functionality for me as a maintainer of the Chocolate Guru project to push other commits into that branch to then have uh, the CI still kick in off of that PR. So by doing this work, if we now go into here and let's have a look at the YAML and see if we can't put in some additional UI that will allow us to have a look. So this is the YAML for this thing. So what do we have? Resource dictionary, don't care about that just now. What have we got? We've got a grid, and in the grid is a couple of things. List view, so the list view is, what have we got here? Just trying to piece together where we are. So that's grid two, row two row, is row one, okay? So, list view. Oh, does the list view have an empty item template? Mm, list view. No, the item template wouldn't really work, would it? Um, no, I don't think that the that empty item template wouldn't work. So, if all else fails, let's. I'm hoping that uh, Jan's not on the stream because what I'm away to do probably flies in the face of something that a good YAML developer would do. So if you're watching at home, probably don't do what I'm away to do. Um, so in here, we will add a. Let's just start with a text block and see where we get to. So this is going to be in, let's take this out of here, and we'll put that up there. Okay, that's baby steps. Let's see that this hasn't broken anything. And one of the nice things about the new WPF functionality in oh uh, maybe we have broken stuff. Oh and that's maybe just inheriting a style. So it is still there, so that's good. What I was gonna say was one of the nice things about the WPF is it's kinda got uh, it's kinda got as you make changes, you can see them live. Oh no, that's nothing to do with dark mode. That was just, I've broken something that a style is being applied to this list view and it wasn't being applied because I put it inside a stack panel. Uh, not a problem. Um, Arthur, do you see you? Or virtually see you? So if we do that, so you'll see that it's, there's my list box, no, my text box is there, right? So what I want to do is based on a property of the view model. So this thing here, let's bring this up. This thing is tied to the instance of the resource view model. So that is in this thing. So resource view model is here. So in here, we could create a public property 
to then bind to it. So we've got already got some public properties in here that we're bind we can we can bind stuff to. So we can create a new one that is current page. Let's just create a new one that is public bool uh, is prevent preload is prevent is preventing preload is let's just let's just start with that. Right. Let's not overthink it just now. Uh return I don't know what we want to do. Uh, we want to get in here. Return at the minute. Let's just return true. Okay. Has preload prevented? We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. So although the YAML can be rebuilt dynamically, the C sharp code doesn't. So what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to attempt to bind the visibility of the text block to that uh, is preload property. So in here, once this comes up, we are going to say visibility, visibility is bound to, and this is where my lack of uh, we need a converter, so I need to remember how to do that. Um, this is what we want. Essentially, we want what's in here. Blah, 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 bool to visibility. So we'll grab that. We'll go back down to where we were. Visibility is here, but we're going to bind it to this thing rather than to where it was is download count available okay so if we get back to here so now it's well, i was going to say it's gone but it's maybe not okay so it's currently around the other way so we've said true visibility is now true because it's true so we actually want to do the inverse so that's where we have to look up at visibility converter convert uh, well that's the built in one um multi boolean and visibility and to boolean uh, there is I have another converter in here somewhere that is a negation one. Let me try and remember what we've done. The converter So this is where my lack of WPF knowledge comes into play. Let's have a little Google. WPF. Boolean to visibility converter invert. I know I've done this before. Yeah, I was convinced. I was convinced that it was in this project that I'd done this. Let's search again for converter here. Boom utility. There we go. I just haven't called the converter. Yes. Boolean to visibility inverted. Gotta love my naming convention there, haven't you? Hmm. 
controls. And here's our usage of it. So if we grab this one. Thank you for that, Kim, by the way. I don't know why I haven't called that converter. Probably something else that's going to annoy me. Um, so in here, we can put that in. And where we were binding to this one. Let's grab that and also stick it in here. So if we go back to here, then they are because that single property is now going to control two things. So it's going to be initially we want to hide the list view. Well, I think what, we, but then if it's got stuff in it, I'm just thinking. But how then do we do? So basically what my thought process was that one of these would be inverted and one of them wouldn't be. So one is bool to viz and one is bool to viz inverted. Yeah. So it's got nothing in it just now. No need to hide the list view though. When it is empty, it won't show up anyways. If I, and I think that's what that's kind of what we're seeing here as well. So maybe I don't need my bool to invisibility to be here then. So the list view is indeed not there. So when we do, but we still need to hide this when there are to this. Let me think through this. So it's there. I mean, we can change the the the, the setting the where it is. But right now, we would also want to base that on whether there are any results. So whether packages is not. Oh yeah, whether packages has values. So the visibility of this thing is now dependent on a couple of things. So we would want to hmm, this is more complicated than I might have wanted. Because right now if we leave it the way it is and we search for VLC, then hello there is going to be there and the list view is going to be there. Which is not what we want. So let's see based on the search results. We could do that, yes. That's probably the simplest way of doing it. I think I was trying to make it too hard. So right now, well, what I was going to do here, if we search for config service, I was going to use the same thing here. So I was going to pull this value out, and this value is what I was going to put into this property. But you're right, if we do... I was going to do that, but we would want to do, if it's that, is prevent preload. Let me rename this so that we get our uh, Boolean logic around the right way. So what is it? Uh, this Boolean is show prevent preload message.
So this is a Boolean value which is in, to indicate whether we show the message or not. So we show that message if this is true and packages dot count is not equal to zero. No, that's wrong. But that won't work. Because what if the packages.count is... Oh, we wouldn't want has load. Mm. No, it's... Packages.count is not really enough, is it? Because they might have searched for something and there are no packages. At that point, we wouldn't want the prevent preload to show. How do we... There is a has loaded, so what sets this? What sets the has loaded? Load packages. So I had thought about the MTI template, yes. So it's not, that's not really what I'm thinking. What I'm trying to address is that initial load. So if you've got that, if you have the um, the prevent preload feature enabled, and when you go to that page for the first time, I wanted to show a message saying prevent preload has been enabled. After that, I don't care about showing it again. So what I'm trying to prevent now is the situation where someone searched for something and the result is zero, which would be where the empty item template would come in. I don't want the message to show in that scenario. I only want the message to show when you come to that page for the first time and you haven't done anything on that page. So I'm wondering whether the has loaded flag is what's needed here. No, that's. I'm not sure if that's a route we want to go down either, Maurice. I don't think. Because where's load packages called from? Load packages is. When you refresh, fine. It is. From initial page load, I would have thought. On initialize. Hmm. But I think we are on to something here in terms of doing the work in the Boolean. So. Where did this go? So we're going to show that prevent preload message if the prevent preload is enabled and not loaded. Let's try that. Right, let's see what this does. That would be another way. Let's maybe. Let's see what happens here. So we click on chocolatey, then it's there. We search for VLC and 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 why is that something taking ages? It's still there. Why is it still there? Oh. 
because of WPS. Um, so load packages need to What is the thing I'm looking for? Notify. Thing that I'm looking for is I don't know if it's that one. That's on observable base. The observable base is on. Green is on. I know if I have it changed. With the code now, that wouldn't work though, I think, what I'm saying. But that would still leave the text area, leave the text if the user used the reload button and not searching anything. Because what I'm concerned about right now. Oh, I see, okay. Did I not set a breakpoint? I thought I did. Oh, hold on. Hold on, people. I don't think I updated the YAML. I was like, why is that getter not being called? Let's try that again. So we click in here, and this is true, and this is true. So that's right now there. Hold on, what? Why is has loaded true? Has loaded. Sure, if this is now doing what I think it's doing. This has loaded flag. Let me just check that. This is. Stop this. Refresh this. Oh no! Of course. Because of that, because of that feature, it's now setting that value. Because it's now we're not has loaded, and this is true, so we can't use the has loaded. That's not going to help us at all, because that's always going to be in there. Okay. So so that takes us back to where we were going before. It says. And packages 
setting the property manually during loading. Thinking. Okay. So at this point, this would be show preload equals true, and then anything else show preload message equals false. I have no objections to it so far, <laughs> so let's see what it does. So it's there, then we search for VLC, and it is still there, but that's, that's maybe okay, because we didn't come back to it. So we have... Let's put that breakpoint back in here. Here's my getter. Dun, dun, dun. So I'm expecting that this getter is going to get called once. Let's remove this. And that's it getting called there. If we search for VLC, then I can take this out of here. Oh no, hold on. We might want to set that to false there. That didn't get called there. So the issue here is I think it's this because there's some magic that happens and there's some magic that happens that I've forgotten how that magic works There's various things being used in this WPF project for around I know high property change, specifically uh, the use of FOD so that we don't have to implement the I know high property change on each of the uh, property values. So I think what we want is what's on my clipboard which is, I think this will help with this, and that 
goes in here and here. Oh, I've got set twice. That's not going to help either. Yep, exactly that, Elise. Let's see if we can make this code compiler again. There we go. And see if this helps. We have to look at that. That's true. I, th I still think we need to do this part to make things. I think you're right. I'm missing something that I'll know it when I see it. I'll know it when I see it. Um, what is it I'm trying to do? So yeah, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with that part. There is there's there is something else that I want to find that is related to this. And if I don't find it, I'm going to I'm going to be annoyed because It's, it's at the back of my mind and I'm going to need to find it now. This is what I was looking at. I don't think it's directly relevant here but it's the concept of related properties changing. So when the selected source changes, you potentially need to more update the value of a related property. So in this case, this is what this function is doing. So whenever the selected property is changing, it asks to then notify the related property that is can save. So if we look at can save, then can save is directly related to the selected source property. So whenever this changes, we need to publish a change to the can save property and that's what the notify property change is doing yes okay so i feel better now having seen that right so the way that we are running we would have needed this potentially if we had used the search query property so anytime the search property query was set we would have needed to tell it to also notify the can show prep property whatever the method was called. But in this case, we're not doing that because we didn't go down that path. So as Kim said, if we now go back and for the sake of completeness, I am going to have a little look in here to see what this is doing. Yes, so it's calling the base is notify property. So that's an extension on, the, so that is exactly what we need. So I'm going to grab this and we search in here for underscore of this and we find out where we're setting it and instead of setting that we set that and instead of setting that we set that. Let's see if this works. And if this works we 
have shown some text on the screen. It's amazing. <laughs> We've shown some text on the screen. Uh, you see when you don't do WPF in a long time. Right. Okay, so that's the initial get, which is good. And then we do VLC. Then we get. Then it's not there anymore. Look at that. And if we search for VLV, it's still not there, which is right. So it's only on the initial load. But what happens when we come back to here? What happened? So in that scenario, what do we want? We've been in here once. We saw that message. We searched for something res that resulted in an empty query string, an empty selection, and we've navigated off the source and we've come back again. Nothing's there. What do we want in that scenario? You should know it by now. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I don't disagree with you, Maurice. I have to be honest. Um, let's take this breakpoint off. Um, let's start messing with the YAML a little bit to see if we can't make it look pretty. We probably... Is that an apostrophe because you are writing won't? Or were you writing want? Just so I'm clear. We probably want to have the text in that case. So we'll come back to that one. Let's, let's try and make it look pretty for a little bit. So how can we do this so we can see both things at once? So that we can mess around with that a little bit. Let's put this over here. Let's put this down a little bit and <laughs> right so this is where we try and test our WPF capabilities who's with me so this text block is gonna do stuff so we want to have a little look at the vertical alignment and it's going to be, let's see what that does, nothing, okay, fine, horizontal alignment, Ooh, progress being made, um, uh, in my opinion, when there is no package found, a message saying, this is not the package you're looking for should appear. Yes, I don't disagree with that. So that so that could be the empty item template, which we referred to before, but that doesn't help in the scenario that I described though. So if we come back to here, so we're currently in a situation where we've got hello there. You've got it prevented. We click on VLC and we get some stuff, right? We put in VLV. We've got nothing being shown here. We could have the empty item template, absolutely. If I click on this, and I click on this, ooh, it remembered it. Okay, what if I do this? I've deleted it. I haven't hit enter, and I've clicked back here, and back on here. So now, in theory, the empty item template should still be being shown. Okay, okay. So let's try this then. Let's let's put in an empty item template. Um, is that as simple as list view? List view. Oh, it might be in the... It might be... Yep. 
but what I'm thinking about now is this one. So here's the data template. Uh, Lots of stuff happening here, data template, package tile template. So there's lots of things happening here based on whether or not we have the um, tile view enabled or not. So let's have a little look at this. List view empty data template. No, that's a that's a web control. That's that's not the one we want. I don't think. No, no, that's, that's, that's okay. I was just having I was having mad flashes back to my ASP.NET days. I think it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, all the way back, all the way back, object data sources and SQL data sources and oh, fun times, fun times. Oh, what's this? Dark mode. You've been asking for dark mode for years. The dark mode beta is finally here. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to have to show you this over here. Hold on. So, where are we? It's been a long time since I've been on here too. This one here. Oh, I'm still. Uh, my name is still there. I've not been a moderator on this for a long time, though. Um, I used to back in the day, back in the day. I. This is me. I was a long time moderator of the ASP.NET forums on this website many 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 years ago I don't even remember when the last time was I was in here let's see if I can even still get logged in oh, that look good. oh that doesn't look good yeah that doesn't look good at all does it yeah ASP.NET moderator 2018 was the last time I was logged in here um I was on here for a long time. Yeah, it's it it wasn't didn't used to be this bad. <laughs> it didn't used to be this bad. Um where's the oh, I can't remember what I was trying to find now. Oh, that's not good. That's really bad. Uh, kind of one of the reasons I came away from it. Um, anyway, no, what I was saying that, like, I like say I was 
a long time moderator of this forum and I got to the point where it was all ASP.net, original ASP.net. Lots of discussions about, as I say, object data sources, SQL data sources, uh, view state, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, so yeah, but I was I was going back here. Though. What's this? Dark mode beta. Ooh, might have to turn that on. But Adil's saying it's not. It's actually not as functional as you would think in daytime. I might have to. Why don't I see that was over here? Oh, it is here. I'm not signed in. Oh, no, I can't go on that screen. I'll have to come back to that. Okay, so that's another rabbit hole. Um, what were we looking for? We were looking for WPF MTM template. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, but I'm not signed in, no idea, actually. So I'd have to. Uh, yeah, no, we'll come back to it. Because what I'm searching for here is what? How can we? Style would be origin domain binding cell. Oh, surely not. There isn't a, no, there must be a specific one. No, I can't believe that there's not a. Yeah, that's the conclusion I was coming to just now as well, Ken. Um. Didn't really want to have to go to that extreme, but okay. And then the style is that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So this is the and this is where my understanding of all things where's that defined package list template. That doesn't make any sense. Weird. That's right there. Why did it not come up originally? Okay, you know what? I'm going to come back to that one because I might phone a friend. I might phone yeah. Not literally phone him, but I might ask his advice on how best to proceed with an empty item template. And let's just have a little play with where we got to here, this part. Right. So we got to the point where we were saying hello there, which is great. Where we want to get to is we want to get to the fact that this thing 
has taken up all of the available space. Sorry, what? What did I miss? Or what did I say? Oh. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I did. I'm sorry. I was so slow on the uptake of that one. Um, we want this thing to take up all of the available space. So we want it to stretch. Is that a stretch in here? What does that do? No. We want the text block to take up all the available space in the ta in the stack panel. That's what we want. WPF stack panel text block fill vertical. I wonder how many people's OCD is going off. Now by watching the current stream, probably a, probably a lot. Um, start panel, available. Blah blah blah. Stack panel is meant for stacking things even outside the visible region, so it won't allow you to fill the remaining space with a stacking. I thought that was going to be. The you can use a dock panel with last child fill set to true and dock all the non-filling controls to the left to simulate the effect that you want. Dock panel, last child fill. I don't like the sound of that. So let's take this off. And rather than a stack panel, let's call this a dock panel. Last child fill is true. And the last child is going to be that guy. Let's see what that does. I'm just going to leave that space there now with. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm really not. I'm really not. I wouldn't be such a savage. Oh, that's already better. Look at that. Right. So, what we now want to have a look at now size equals 100. In terms of the font size, you mean? In terms of the tech, it would be font, I think. Font size equals, I think that would be a little bit, nah, that's a little bit too big. <laughs> that's more like it, right? But this text doesn't look like this text. What you think? Uh, I'm not sure how well. Let's have a look. Boom. Boom. Visibility, when the visibility is um, false, the element is collapsed. So I think we're good. I think we're good. So let's run this again. Ship it. Well, we need to put some text in there, and we need to make that text a localizable thing. Um, which we're not currently doing. So we need to do that.
And then click on this. Okay. Do we want this to be white when there's nothing there? Do we want that background to be white? Similar to what it is. Well, that's a different discussion. Anything that we do here, Jan's going to have to fix in the dark mode as well. <laughs> so that's a different discussion. But this is grey because of the element. So it's only once it's only once the list box comes into play that it makes the background white. So the question is, do we want the text block that is now in there to also have a white background? And if we do, then where does it get that from? Foreground, value, brushes, accent base, what does that do? What does that do? Text block. Does it have a foreground property? It does. What does that do? Oh, I've lost it. Oh, it wouldn't be the foreground. That would be the wrong color. It would need to be the background, wouldn't it? Silly. Let's see what it does anyway. Yeah, that's not the right color. <laughs> Background. Huh. It's going to be this one. I think that one is the gray. Oh no! Yeah, I, yeah. I I think you're right. But background equals that guy. What happens there? Oh. That text block is not really doing what I want. There's some weirdness going on. Hmm. Okay, how much time have I got left? I've got I smell dark chocolate. So Stevie, the, no, we're not we're not playing with a dark mode in chocolate gooey. We're we're adding some functionality. Um we're not we're not attempting to get the background mode work uh, the, the dark mode working, because that's simply put, that is outside of my wheelhouse by a long stretch of the imagination. What we're trying to do right now, so this is this is still chocolate gooey as it currently stands, right? Um, what we're playing with is a PR that enabled a new feature, which is to prevent the preload. So we've enabled that feature. So what that if I turn that feature off again, and I close this, and I open up chocolate gooey. <laughs> now it's white. So, but then I, so what I don't know, Marie, so I'll have to dig into it a little bit more, is I don't actually know which element starts to stop. So this grey up here is flowing down into that element. So I don't know if this, the whole thing is that colour or whether it's other things going on. So right now, Stevie, if you saw that happening, is that when you click on chocolatey, it automatically loads the first page of results. So what someone has put into Chocolatey GUI is a PR for this prevent preload. So if I turn this on again, and I close this down, 
and then I re refresh it. Then when I navigate to the chocolate source, it's not going to go off and fetch that first page of results. The thought process behind this is that in an environment where the only reason you're clicking on this is to search for something, then you don't necessarily need that first page of results because you just want to come in here and click or type VLC and hit search. So what we're trying to put in place is, so that functionality works. So the, the preventing preload feature is there and it's preventing the loading of that first page of results. What we're trying to put in play is a message on the chocolate GUI page, the remote source when you click on it to give a warning that says, by the way, you've got the preload enabled feature on. That's why you're not seeing anything. Please search for a result. So what we've got right now is it's saying hello there. So in imagine in here, it's going to say uh, the prevent preload feature is enabled. Uh, please search for the results that you want. Right. So I'm trying to put that text in here and that's functionality. What the functionality is there. Right, the functionality to <laughs> killing me. The functionality to do that work is all here. What I'm trying to fight with is the WPF styling to put it in a way that makes it look pretty. So I think at this point I am going to say that I like the PR. So the PR itself can go in, um, but we need to create a a follow up task to do two things. One is to put some styling in and around this thing to make it clear that that text is what that te what's happening. So let's do this. Let's take this background and foreground out again. And I'm going to make this text say something a little bit more applicable that says uh, prevent preload feature is enabled please search for a package in the please search for a package using the text box above right that clearly doesn't work very well how do i do a wrap seriously seriously wpf you're just messing with me now wrap text wrapping is wrap there we go beautiful this should have been i'm sorry i'm catching up on the uh the chat messages here um who we got i think we've got is it forward Forwards come in in the chat room. Hello, Forward. How's it going? Um, perhaps you should set the background color of the whole panel. Maybe it would be hard enough. A wild Jan will appear. Maybe, <laughs> maybe a more wild Jan will appear. Uh, Stevie saying it'll be much faster. Uh, hello, you too. Howdy. This is Mort Mort Miss. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. Howdy. How are you all doing? I found your Gep13 Twitch channel. Welcome along. All right, great job. Oh, I love that style, working chocolate gooey. This should have a billion views. <laughs> I'm about to design a unique overlay for your channel. Okay, that sounds good. I'm going to keep this brief, so check out the reference in my profile image. Have a great day, by the way. Science and technology probably the best one for the best games. By the way, science and technology probably the best or one of the best games of this oversaturated genre. Yeah, I think you're maybe right spam i think so um hey ford uh i would take a guess it's a spam bot it's a bot beautiful oh, i was getting excited there i was getting i was like i was i was getting recognition <laughs> um okay so let's um can someone in the chat room take a screenshot of what's currently on the page please and send it to me because I don't have access to easy um, screenshot capabilities in my current setup. So I'm gonna leave that on the page. So 
Yes, I, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Um, if someone if, if you take us if someone can let me know if it, once they've got a screenshot of what's on my screen, I'll, I'll close it and I'll maybe have a quick look at how. Thank you, Maurice. Right, how do I how do I add mods? Twitch.tv get thirteen. Um, accept. That's not what I wanted. Am I signed in? I am signed in. Okay. Um, how do I settings? How do I add a mod? Does anyone know how to add a mod? Mod. No. Twitch. Add mod orator. Oh, that's gonna be promising. How to mod someone on Twitch? How to mod Twitch users? No. Setting up moderation. Maybe I haven't done that. Game revolution. Copy to clipboard. Let's do this and then I'll close out for the day. Uh, thank you, Ford. I appreciate it. How to mod someone on Twitch 2019. Go to your channel's stream chat, right? Okay. Back a bit. Back a bit. Oh, it's maybe in the directly in the stream here. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kim. <laughs> Everybody's sending it. Okay, I appreciate it. Uh ooh, oh, oh okay, hold on. So I could do this then? Oh I can block admiring worm. How do I uh stream chat? Go to your stream chat, input the command mod. Oh, oh, I've got to do it. Okay, hold on there. Try to do this then. Mod. Oh, there's mods. Can you guys see the output of that? Okay, hold on. Hey, 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 take it. <laughs> um, there are no moderators of this channel. Okay, so if I do mod add admiring worm let's do that you have added admiring worm as a moderator of this channel with great power comes great responsibility so mod uh, m kevin r ooh right so Maurice and Kim should both now be moderators of this channel. Those, these are the they're the folks that um come up attend regularly. That's oh, Maurice just banned someone. Oh, straight in there, straight in there. Look at that. So how did you do that then? Did was that is that a ban command or what did you do? I'm so curious now. Oh, look at that. Did you give a reason? Strong core power. <laughs> Indeed. Yes, but did you give a reason? Because it, it's and it's permanently ban a user from chat. Interesting. So can I do that from over here? Because I use a little application called um, Chatty, which is a Windows application for looking at the chat while I'm on stream. I don't get the kind of uh, slash commands appearing in chatty, but when I'm on the chat on the Twitch page, then I can see the slash commands. Oh, look at this. I can do polls. I can, oh, so that's where I do a raid from. Oh, interesting. Okay. Unique chat user, VIP, grant VIP. Oh, what's a VIP status? Hold on. You can also click on a so when I went to the Twitch chat window in the website, you were the first message that came up. It didn't show me the rest of the history. I just joined it. Um, oh, so, oh, so you just happened to know that that was the command there. Okay, I see what you're saying. But on the via the website, when you do the slash command, 
in the chat window, it brings up all the commands that you can do. You can also put in username, table type, temp, permanent, and so on. Okay, good to know. It's all happening now. Uh, talk to you later, Martin. I appreciate you coming in, and I will. I'm gonna, I'm gonna solve it at some point. I'll keep you posted on my efforts. I'll get there. Um, have I got any also VIPs? What's that? VIPs for this channel. Ooh, I do have some VIPs. <laughs> what does that mean though? Because people on the people that I would have thought would have been on that list aren't on the list. So let's let's try a Delio. I don't actually know what that does. Because I would have thought that both Kim and Maurice would have been on that, but they're not. I'm getting carried away now. This is this is me going down a rabbit hole. I, I need to come off for the night. Um VIP management. What no <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay. Anyway. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop playing this just now. This is something I need to play with that. So anyway, so getting back to what we're attempting to do, and I appreciate all the screenshots by the way. Um, um, what we need to do is I need to merge that PR in a chocolate GUI, which is for uh, adding that new feature, which um, uh, makes sense. But I need to talk to Jan about the styling of the uh, what's shown when it's initially turned on or off. And then I also need to have an empty item template when you search for something and there's nothing returned to basically say that there was nothing returned. Um, and that was it. So we haven't really done as much as what I was hoping to do tonight. But to recap, where I want to go is if we search again for VLC here, then the next piece of functionality that I want to look at is when you right click on this, I want another uh, context menu here that is install advanced or something and that will pop up a modal that allows you to pass in additional uh, package parameters install arguments other arguments into the install so that you've got m more control over uh, how that works so that's kind of where we're going next piece of functionality is where we're going if I can figure out how to get this part working so the only changes that I've got to this or what changes have I got? I've basically done nothing apart from add a property to the model. Um, all I did was add that, really, wasn't it? So there's very little there. Okay, I wouldn't worry about it. I can always get it back. So for now, though, let's close this out by saying uh, in here. Let's get this merged. Looks good to me. Approve, submit. And let's get this bad boy merged then. And then let's send a message saying, thank you very much for this addition. I think we will need a follow up change to provide some information about why no packages are being displayed and also to add an empty item template to the list view as well but that can be covered in another issue let's do that and let's go and have a look here we're going to add this to the 018 milestone. This is going to be a feature. So we'll get that added. And 
blah, blah, blah. So you can close this out because we've done it. Okay, so let's quickly add that issue while I remember about it. Uh, let's go back. So we've got here as a follow up to this issue. It would be good to provide an provide some text when first going to first going to a remote source to provide to provide to explain why there are no packages displayed. In addition, it would help to have an empty item template and searching for something yields no results. So I'm going to say that this is going to be an improvement. I'm going to say that this is going to be on the 0 018. And then we're going to need a title, which is um, explain why there are no packages in remote views. Okay, I'm going to submit that. And okay, that's good. Okay, so that's what I'm done today. And then, like I say, what I'm hoping to get to is at least starting to provide the functionality. It will look horrible uh, because my YAML skills are lacking. But uh, if we can start providing the functionality around being able to do an advanced install or an advanced upgrade by passing in. Uh, additional arguments for the package installation. I think that would be a, a very useful feature to have. And yeah, I think that's all I have for tonight. So thank you all for coming and hanging out with me tonight. Uh, as I mentioned on Twitter, this is, I'm going to keep this stream going on a Monday night and hopefully going forward on a Friday lunchtime as well. Um, Um, no. Did I? What did I miss? Uh, and, and Adil, have you got a question, or are you just putting your hand up for, um, to say something? I didn't knowingly change you. No. Eh? No, I haven't done anything. All right. Sorry. Um. So hold on. One thing at a time. So I'm not quite away yet. But I'll come back to the idea. Um, look at the diamond. I haven't. I haven't changed. I, I don't have. I don't know. What to, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what diamond you're talking about. Um, is that on the Twitch chat? Where would I see a diamond? Because I don't. I don't. I don't have access to the diamond. Mod or MVP? Hold on. So if I do VIPs, diamond in front of my name. I see a diamond in front of your name, yes. So you are currently a VIP. Right next to the name, there are icons. Yes. So for Maurice, there is a diamond, a first, and a two. Yes. So hold on mods there are no moderators of this channel do i have to do it each time because i well so what happened was i closed the twitch chat window the the twitch site i closed the browser so did that remove you guys so if i if i mod um kevin r again okay so send me another message maurice Yeah.
Hey, so we're back again. No, no, no. So he, Ma Maurice is still a VIP. No, he's not. I has a sword again. So how come you still got it? Because you're... Oh. Okay, so hold on. So if I mod at my ring worm again. Okay. Right. I'm going to close the Twitch chat window again. I'm going to close it. You guys are still mods, right? So send me another message. Yeah, okay. So you're still there. Okay, so you can't be a VIP and a mod. Okay. I'm assuming that's okay with you guys. So you guys can be my mods. So if another spam bot comes in, then you can kick them out. Right, beautiful. Uh, oh, now you've got an at sign. In chatty, you've now got an at sign in front of your username. Oh, interesting. Didn't know that. So much about Twitch, I don't know. It really is. Um, see, I never did. I I never did the whole IRC thing, so I I don't I don't get. I, yeah, there's a. You've got, Maurice. You've got an at sign and a per, uh, percentage sign, whereas a deal has got an exclamation mark, and a plus sign. So exclamation mark must be a VIP. Plus sign, what's the crown that you've got there? I don't know what the crown is. Oh, you're on Twitch Prime. That's what that is. Okay. And I've got a tilde in front of my name. The, ex the exclamation mark is... No. I think the exclamation mark in this context is uh, a diamond, which is VIP. And that would match up with what I'm seeing. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, this is still a rabbit hole, and I'm I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to get out the rabbit hole to go and do some. Th well, at this point, I'm trying to go to sleep. Um, Nick prefixes, but I'm gonna open this. I'm gonna go. <laughs> Nick prefixes. Or symbols that are used at the start of people's nicknames. Yeah, but are those Twitch specific ones? Right. Yes. Okay. So plus is VIP, which matches. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Twitch chat users. Okay. Okay. I'm learning. Okay. I'm just going by what I see in the chatty window and how it relates to what statuses I've got you. Anyway. Going forward, my aim is in order to help my own sanity in terms of being self-isolated and um, in lockdown and having two kids at home and working from home, I intend to keep this slot open as a Twitch stream so that I have some interaction with other folks uh, that aren't my immediate family. So I got some sort of um, ability to communicate with people that uh, helped my sanity, basically. Uh, so I'm going to keep this uh, slot open and at Friday lunchtime I'm going to try and get back and do Friday lunchtimes as well. I've, I've, I haven't done them for a long time, but those are the kind of quick lunchtime stream from just getting a few couple of things done this one being the main one on a monday evening so we've got plenty to do in chocolate gooey i still want to get back to the chocolate extension for visual studio code i still really want to get to that but i feel i'm getting pulled back to chocolate gooey a little bit to try and get some of these uh function some of this functionality out the door because i would really love if jan does get to the point where he's got a dark mode i want to be able to ship uh a release quite quickly so i want to have and um, I want to. There's a couple of things I want to get in. 
I got, I, I want I want to get this uh, PR that Kim started a while back for uh, dynamically switching the uh, selected language. I would love to get that in as well. So yeah, lots of things I would love to get into Chocolate GUI and hopefully it won't be as long a release uh, as compared to the last one. Uh, Forward asking, can we have Q and A's as well? I mean, not specifically a Q and A on the stream, uh, Ford, but if there's questions, a lot of the folks that are in the Twitch in the chat to just now are uh, chocolatey folks. So if you have a question, um, yeah, feel free to ask on the stream. Um, I will either do my best to answer it, or uh, someone in the chat uh, might be able to answer it as well. Uh, but for now, I'm 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 going to sign off because it's end of my day here. So uh, thank you all for coming, and I'm going to loop back to where I started. Is that this is my other part of my keeping my sanity going in self isolation. I'm figuring out how to solve a Rubik's cube. I'm at a point where I can reliably get uh, the bottom two layers completed, uh, and I'm working on figuring out how to do the top layers without cheating. Now, the cheating being going to a website or a video to explain how to do it. So I'm two thirds of the way there, and uh, maybe next week I might go to the third one. We'll see. But anyway, yes, I'm I'm out. So have a good night. Stay safe, everyone. Keep that two meters, six feet distance from everyone and uh, remember to wash your hands as well okay all right talk to you later bye bye